To trending sports now, where it was an emotional night at Mullet Arena in Tempe, Arizona Wednesday, where 27 years after setting up shop in the desert, the Coyotes played their final game. Meanwhile, history was made in Tampa Bay, while Austin Matthews came up just short in the second last night of the NHL's regular season. That will do it. The Coyotes win the finale. 5-2. For an emotionally charged so out crowd here at Mullet Arena. It was a bittersweet celebration as the final horn and howl went off to put the finishing touches on a 5-2 victory for the Coyotes over the visiting Oilers and close the book on the team's time in the desert. The franchise, which first came to be after a move from Winnipeg ahead of the 96 season and has called Arizona home for nearly three decades, will be relocated to Salt Lake City. The NHL Board of Governors voted unanimously today to approve a $1.2 billion sale from Alex Marillo to Utah. Utah Jazz owners Ryan and Ashley Smith clearing the way for the franchise's move to Utah next season. The deal includes a provision that Arizona will get an expansion team if a new arena is built within the next five years. It's a disappointing end for hockey fans in Arizona who have gone through multiple ownership changes, three different arenas, and near constant relocation rumors. The team didn't find much success in the desert, especially as of late, where outside a run to the conference finals in 2012 made the playoffs just once while in the COVID's bubble in 2020 since then. After the game was over, players were joined on the ice by hockey staff for a celebration and one last team photo, while a few players tossed their sticks over the glass to fans who chanted, we love you Coyotes, well after the final whistle. Up top, Radish, in the slot, points there. Elsewhere last night, Lightning forward Nikita Kucherov became the fifth player in NHL history and first since Monday to record 100 assists in a season in the Lightning's final regular season game. Kucherov set up teammate Braden Point in the third last night to hit the century mark to join Wayne Gretzky, who did it 11 times, along with Connor McDavid, Mario Lemieux, and Bobby Orr in the NHL record books. The 30-year-old Russian, who is all but certain to win the Art Ross Trophy as the league's top scorer, finished the year with 100. 44 points, the second most in the NHL since 1997. Meanwhile, Maple Leafs forward Austin Matthews could not find the back of the net to etch his name into the history books. Matthews was trying to become the first player in 30 years to hit 70 goals on the season, but will have to settle for 69 in that category. While the Leafs lost the game 4-2, there was not much to play for in this one. Both teams locked into their playoff positions with Toronto taking on Boston and Tampa battling Florida in round one. The regular season wraps up tonight with six games before the playoffs get underway on Saturday. And joining us for more on the Coyotes move to Salt Lake City and Austin Matthews coming up just short of 70 goals is assistant professor of sport management at Brock University Taylor McKee and Taylor after nearly 30 years in Arizona. I'm not sure anyone saw it ending this way. Um, absolutely. I think it's 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 a strange ending, and I think if you would have asked people at NHL head office 10 years ago, if they would have saw their final game for the Arizona Coyotes to be played in a 5,000-seat arena with a sort of half whiteout in rather truly tragic feeling circumstances, I don't think that this is exactly how they would have foreseen the ending going in the desert. It was an emotional night, I think, for a lot of people. I think the growth of the game in Arizona has been something that's been talked about, you know, ad nauseum over the last few weeks and how many current NHLers are, are, are from Arizona and how many, how many players grew up watching the Coyotes. The strange thing is the rapidity with which this situation came to a close. And even though so it's a situation in which it seemed to have been dragged on for a decade or more. And then at the same token, this, this quick sort of relocation happens at the speed of light. And it seems that this is one of the things that's very frustrating for many fans that you've heard for, for so long. Oh, it's a complicated process. Oh, it'll take forever. And then, of course, it happens seemingly overnight. Heading into the final six games tonight, just two playoff matchups to be determined. What are some of the biggest storylines that have your attention? I mean, there's a lot of talk about changing playoff format, and I think um, fans of, of, of teams in this region, perhaps even the Toronto Maple Leafs, uh, can understand why. I mean, 
This first round matchup is is one we have seen here for the for the Toronto Maple Leafs specifically uh, that we've seen a few times. The the NHL has a sort of strange uh, situation on its hand in, on its hand here where they wanted to create these sorts of rivalries, and I think that in some senses it's worked in some divisions in some parts of the, of North America. But there is this sort of sense that now the first round has become almost too important. It's become almost this entire the summation of an entire season. So we're having another rematch of Toronto Boston. I'm not sure what the sort of mental psyche is like for uh, for for Leaf fans these days with regards to expectations. But this should be a another year where where Leaf fans should be expecting a, a fair amount of success, even against a team that has been extremely good this season. And before we go, Taylor, what are your thoughts on Austin Matthews coming just short of 70 goals? I mean, getting to 70 or not, I mean, it is one of these sort of tricky milestones that the expectation is, well, maybe he'll get it next year, maybe he'll get it the year after that. It's not that easy. I mean, you need so many things to go correct. You need you need a fair amount of, of, of luck to go with an absolutely astronomical amount of skill. Um, but I think the larger maybe story here is you're seeing Ovechkin chasing that all-time goals record. And then you're seeing sort of a, in a weird sort of shadow way, Matthews at a higher clip, producing at a higher clip than even Ovechkin did at this age. So it's you're almost seeing a, a view into the future. Also, uh, hopefully, Austin Matthews won't be losing many of his seasons to lockouts. So if he stays healthy and he stays a fraction of this productive, he's going to be in the same position that Ovechkin is at this very time. So, so not hitting 70 was truly, you could see that the frustration in his mind, in his eyes in the first two periods of that game, because he had all sorts of looks, he had plenty of shots and he was getting plenty of opportunities. And it clearly meant a lot to his teammates too, to get him to that number. It is such an, a, a, an alien number for, for someone like myself who grew up in the nineties where, you know, I mean, no one was scoring 70 goals in the, in the version of the nineties that I was aware of um, the sort of the late nineties. And now the, the idea of, some of the seasons where our, you know, our Ross winners were scoring in the 30s. I mean, now to have a 70 goal score seems absolutely ridiculous. Taylor, thank you so much for joining us this evening on Trending Now. Thanks so much for having me.